Oh yeah! Hey guys, it's Mark Shea here. You're watching another episode of Exploring Australia. Got something really special for you. Get ready. Check it out! Rev it up, pay the toll. Follow in the wild line to free our soul. The UHS on 25, we got a combo. Okay, so I'm outside, obviously. Um, so there's going to be our background noises. Deal with it. <laughs> So, can't help that, but this is, I wanted to tell you something. As you guys know, I've been slowly accumulating hiking gear as I'm planning to get Australia with the flies and the heat. It's like 30 degrees Celsius. If I remember, I'll put it down what it is in Fahrenheit for you guys over in the States. Anyway, uh, as you guys know, um, I've been slowly collecting gear and with all the COVID stuff and all that sort of thing haven't been able to get out I've done a bunch of day hikes so um, I'm getting ready to do the first overnighter to test out all the gear and a lot of people like the Nomad 2 uh, tent review I did which I'll link in the description and all that um, so yeah so you guys seem to like that, so I thought I'd walk through everything I'm going to be taking on my overnighter. It's only a one night. It may see what I'm about to show you it may seem a bit shocking for one night, but I'll explain it as I go. But before we get started, I want you to share, give some love to Conceptual Creative. Um, they just help me do all this sort of stuff for you guys. And if you want to design a website, have your website maintained, web hosting, all that sort of good stuff, they do it all. So make sure you send them some love because they help me do what I do. So conceptualcreative.com.au. So let's get into the hiking stuff. Okay. So yes, I'm going to be sweaty. It's 30 degrees and there's flies around. This is Australia. <laughs> So as I said, I've accumulated a lot of stuff over the last year or so and I wanted to show you, you know, getting ready for doing some major hikes because we want to actually do some longer hikes, you know, like for the ones that go for a week or more. But we haven't had a chance to get out there, we've done the day hikes and all that sort of stuff. I've got a whole bunch of gear here that hasn't properly been tested and as you guys know, from my reviews of the other stuff, I am extremely on a budget. So I basically just buy what I can afford, which isn't much. <laughs> um, I've had two big, three big expenses over that time, which I'm sure anybody who knows the brands knows how big they are, but they're important. First off, before I get to the backpack and the gear inside, I actually own two pairs of ultras I got the ultras 4.5 Lone Peak 4.5 and I got my main hiking shoe which is the ultra Lone Peak 4.0 only because I've got leg and back problems and so I needed really good shoes these are just absolutely amazing I'm gonna be doing an overnighter with all this gear so I'll be able to give you the yays and nays and what I think of them all the big problem I've got I'm a guy I'm a man whatever you want to call me and clothes are a lot bigger. <laughs> the clothes is the problem, especially if you don't have money. I um, was actually looking at it at a shop with all the fancy dan dancy brand names for hiking gear and that. And a single, you know, like I was blown away that just the rain stuff alone, if you get a rain jacket, that's uh, $130. The pants are $130, so you need $260 just for a full outfit of rain, stuff, rain gear. And then you got the hiking lightweight stuff, and that's all up there, anywhere from $100 to $350 per item. Now, one problem I have is these are my hiking pants, right? Yeah, I'm tubby, so I got big hiking pants. Now, these are really durable, and they're great. Um, but they're heavy. These are almost a kilo. They're 800, over 800 grams on their own. Now, when it comes to packing, I'm expecting it to be hot and, you know, really good weather. But 
when it gets when the weather turns and it gets cold it gets cold so when I'm packing my bag I'm thinking if I've just got my summer gear light gear on then I've got to be able to put all my cold gear in the bag and that's the main issue that I actually have because the cheap well these pants are a good quality but they only pack down so much so they're bulky, they're heavy, and they just take up a lot of room, which you're gonna see something else that does that as well. <clears throat> so this is the main problem if you're trying to do this on a budget, is especially clothing. Um, so what I'm trying to do to adjust with this, um, I've got a thin long sleeve shirt, but we'll get to the clothing I've got packed. I'm, what I'm planning on wearing out is shorts and uh, microfiber t-shirt um, the NG socks the ones with the inserts um, and I've got gaiters only the small ones but for, for the ultras so that's what I'm wearing out if it's cold I'm gonna try and uh, I've got a pair of tights um, just to keep the legs warm that'll be my that's in place of the pants so the shorts and the tights I'm hoping will work it won't be as good as the pants, but the pants are really good, especially if you're walking around um, in the bush. Uh, and my main concern is I just got to be mindful of snakes because we're in snake season. So yeah, I'm hoping that I'll get that in there somehow, but I'll show that later. And of course, you've heard me mention the Oz Trail checking poles. So I've tested these out on the day hikes and they are absolutely awesome. So, but if you want a proper review on them, let me know and I will. So now, we got the big one. Okay, so this is my backpack. It looks huge. It's a bit different from the ones that uh, you, you've seen um, in the day hikes and that that I've been testing out. I was testing out a 60 liter pack um, from Kmart and that was like how much was it? It was like 50, 60 bucks. It was a 65 liter pack. And the only problem with that, with the reason why I couldn't take that on the overnight hike, is after I pack everything, because the way it's lined up, there's no room for the tent or the sleeping bag. So that would actually have to be attached outside. So I, I really wanted my sleeping bag at least inside the pack. But this is a 75 liter Black Wolf cedar brakes or brake cedar um, I know it's really bulky it's a travel pack if you want to see a review on this let me know in the comments and while we're saying comments don't forget to smash the like button if you're enjoying the video so far and subscribe hit the notification bell to see all the reviews of these videos of these this gear so I've got a whole bunch of videos coming up and it'll all be tested with an overnight hike so if you want to see those help out the channel smash like hit subscribe hit the notification bell <laughs> so why is this pack so big <laughs> well I got a 75 liter and what you'll see is when I get to the oh yeah unpack it um, I'm still working out how to pack this properly so I'm still playing Tetris with it um, now this pack here I'm not gonna go through the full features of this pack I'm just giving you an, a R rough idea because I'm sure some of you are going oh my god he's taking that and yes it's over 20 kilos and there's no food and no water in this setup yet and you can see it's pretty full so I'm still working out what I'm going to do so but just to give you a couple little things about this um, this day pack actually unhooks and if I do feel too top heavy and I want to rest I can actually take this off and clip it to the front now the problem I have with this pack at the moment is because it's a travel pack and not such a backpacking pack, I've got no pockets on the side for a water bottle. You know, I was hoping to have two water bottles, but this one doesn't have it. Like I said, I've accumulated all this stuff over time. And so now it's just like, let's test it all out. Tested a few things, but now we're getting into the nitty gritty. So, I'm still working out some spots for it, but 
let's check this out. Now the main reason for this and the re reason why I don't mind this being on the front too much is because it's going to be carrying my camera gear. So I can make all the videos. And it's got toilet paper, toiletries there. I don't go, I don't care what you say, there's no reason to, to stink a B.O. on the trail. You might, you'll be sweaty and all that and you'll have a smell anyway. But there's no point, in, you know, there's no excuse. You, you can even get the little roll on things just to prevent the B.O. side of it. Stink in other ways, just not with B.O. That's one of my pet peeves. But I've got all this sort of stuff, a headlamp and the camera gear goes in there. I got tripods and all that sort of stuff, Couple spare batteries, uh, power pack, nothing special, I've got to actually get a proper one, but that'll have to wait, like I said, I'm on a budget, got little gloves, I think that was all that was in that, and of course I'd have snacks or foods in there as well, um, in the front patch, got like emergency stuff like lighters, um, and the lighter, matches whistle some cordage a leatherman love the le leatherman i actually want to get a pocket knife as well i'm sure tell me go on you can feel free to say in the comments well you don't need that and you don't need that and but i can tell you now in a lot of places in australia all this sort of stuff's going to come in handy depending on where we're going so i'm packing up this overnighter is actually a test to see how I'd go for a longer one. So I could probably cut down some of the stuff, but if we go on like a week hike, I'd want to take a lot of this stuff with me. So got the mosquito fly nets for your face, because again, this is Australia. They get really bad. And you know, if we could make one animal extinct, I'd say the mosquito. Got some cordage. There's actually stuff in here that I would like to have. Like, I've got a whole cordage pack and all that sort of stuff um, for more extreme hikes. Uh, I just have to work out how I'm going to do all this. i uh, got, uh, I know, I've been trying to find a good uh, toothpaste, you know, the travel ones. When I went shopping, they didn't have any, but I've got a bamboo toothbrush, so it's nice and light. Uh, got a long handled spoon and chopsticks so I like using chopsticks and so as far as chunky food in a pack and that I can reach down into the pack with the chopsticks and if I need to I've got a spoon to scoop it all out um, this is a soya squeeze um, water filtration kit so that's got the mesh bag, it's got two water bags, um, it's got the little hose and the connectors and I saw a good couple hacks on there. If you were interested in me doing a video on what I think of the Sawyer stuff, leave it in the comments below and I'll make one just on the Sawyer stuff. Now here's where things get really an issue, like before I get to that, front pocket, what have I got in this one? I got gloves and I got some extra tent pegs, some stronger ones. Because the tent I've got, like all tents, they come with really tiny pegs. I should probably get rid of them, but if, but I've got some heavy duty ones for when the ground's really bad. Um, and I got a pocket on this side. Oh yeah, that's got the tent peg now. Um, so I got, because like some places it's almost impossible to get the pegs into the ground. Uh, so I don't mind carrying a little bit extra weight. I know it's like 20 kilos and there's probably things I could shed if you think so. But like I said, let's get to the real crux of the matter, clothing. So if it gets cold, here's my problem. Now in this pack is one under pair of underwear, one pair of socks. I got a microfiber singlet and I got a spare t-shirt. At the bottom, I've got a flannelette, so instead of a full-on jacket, I've got a, like a puffy vest type thing, but it's not down or anything. It, it's uh, cheap. Um, I think, you know, they're not, they're not expensive. The vest with the hood, which you'll see in a minute, um, it's 
so instead of a jacket which someone my size the jacket's big like i said i'm packing this as if i'm in shorts and a t-shirt and i'm carrying my cold cold weather gear so that way i could be a bit more comfortable so everything's got to fit without the clothing i'd have no dramas so um i've got a flannelette and a vest that is so that's the thing a shirt a singlet undies socks and a flannelette doesn't come packed down very well that's that that is the smallest i can get my vest that's a vest sleeveless jacket but this this vest is absolutely amazing with the wind so if it gets really cold and windy i've got the flannelette to protect most of my arms and this vest just protects the torso it keeps me really warm i've been in really cold weather with this and it's really good but again that it just does not buckle down you see people with their puffy coats and the puffy coats would break down to a third of that so this is the problem i was saying with clothing and being on a budget you can't help the cold weather um, on a budget most of it is bulky it's heavy and yeah but uh, look i love this vest if i could just get it half the size that'd be great but yeah so like i said the puffy jackets are insane they're like 250 upwards for the decent ones so i uh, haven't got to that yet spare roll of toilet paper okay and here i've got a, what a samoans call a lava lava yes i'm half samoan i'm half black so I've got a lava lava for camp, sort of, when we're at camp in that. It, it's basically just a little piece of material that you wrap around your waist. So it's like a Polynesian skirt, you might say, but everybody wears them. They're absolutely brilliant, especially when it's really hot. Um, yeah, you know, I, I love them. If I can get a thicker, better quality lava lava, I'd probably even hike in it. Um, and I've just got an extra pair of swimmers uh, because where we're going is more beachy stuff and those shorts even though they're shorts they're a bit thick but I want to get used to those shorts because they, they're what I normally hike in um, now in this box because what you'll see with my sleep system is a bit unusual so this box actually just has a garbage bag with a pump filter attached so I've basically made a pump sack out of a garbage bag the reason why is because I couldn't afford a sleep pad um, yet. I'm getting it, that's like next on my list. <laughs> the cheapest sleep pad, besides the foam rollers and that, look, I've got a yoga mat in there that kicks ass on most of the foam rollers and I'm just too heavy and, and big to for that to really do anything because I'd take the yoga mat. I reckon that'd be really good. But um, I tested it out to lay on and like on a hard surface, so you know if, it, if I come to like a rocky area um, and the yoga mat doesn't do the job and if that doesn't do the job a lot of the foam things would be the same at, if not worse so I've actually got an inflatable single mattress for seven dollars at Big W I'm not I'm not promoting those shops or anything it's just where I got them and how much I got them for you know it's the cheap crappy ones um, the only problem I'm, uh, I'm just not worried because I've got the sort of coffin shaped Nomad 2. I'm just not sure if my mattress is going to be a little too wide for the foot area. But, like I said, we're going to see when we go out hiking. But that's what's in that. So I've got it in a box so that the bag doesn't get ripped. Because if I can't pump up my air mattress, then I'm totally screwed. So that's what's in that box. Yes, it's bulky, but it's secure. Okay, got a first aid kit and medications and things like that. So that's what I needed that for. Okay, pop that down there. Okay, so in this box here, this is a heavy little thing. It's uh, it's actually a light. I know I've got it. I've got a headlamp, but for nighttime while I'm sitting in uh, my tent and that, I've actually got a little LED strand, which is very light 
It was only 12 bucks from like Bunnings. Um, so that'll give me light and I can just leave it on and when the batteries run dead, they run dead. Um, but if I was going for two or three nights um, before I could resupply, I've got two, night, two other refills of batteries in there for that light. I looked at a lot of the, can uh, the hiking lot lanterns and all that and they're either bulky or there's bad reviews of them and all that. I just want something simple, I thought LEDs don't take up much battery power. Like I said, if you want to see, I'll, I'll be reviewing this sort of stuff properly after we have the oven on. I'm just giving you a rough rundown. Okay, so here is just a, I think it was like 10 bucks, Austral towel. Because um, I'm planning to go swimming, because I'm going to be hiking and going on the beach. I got a 360 stove, oh, 360 stove kit. Uh, that was from Snowy's. So I've got something to cook with. So I've got a fair bit in here. I ain't gonna pull out that. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not gonna pull out that stuff. But here is my Nomad 2 tent, which I actually think is gonna have to be on the outside. You know, I've tried to pack it so that it's on the inside, but I think I need a little bit extra room. All, right, all this fits in. The issue with it is I haven't put water or food here yet and even though this bag has an expansion I don't want to have all that pressure on the expansion part I want to try and have this so it's shut because it's also wide enough with the day pack on the back so I'm still working it out <coughs> I've got heaps of good things to say about this pack I love this pack now the reason why I love people oh you're going overnight for with a 75 litre pack what you gotta remember is I have a cheap well it's not it was hundred dollars from Big W. I bought it a while ago. It's an awesome sleeping bag. It's a synthetic sleeping bag. And what you can see with this pack, it takes up there. So my pack, even though it's 75 liters, I've only got like about 50 liters to play with. Because about 20, 25 liters is all taken up by that big bulky sleeping bag, which I will do a review on. <laughs> It'll be good when I have everything set up and laid out. I'll be able to film it. So, even though it seems like a massive pack, especially for overnight, that's the reason, because we're talking budget here. Now I could go, you know, I'd love to have, what is it, what did we work out when I was talking about before? Like $1,200 that would get a Z-Pax duplex or something, um, and buy a down sleeping bag or quilt. I'd, I'd like to try the down quilt, but they are just insane. Well, yeah, they, they pack up nice and small, you know, like the things I've seen, you get the quilts, they pack up like this. Look at that compared to that. That's my sleeping bag. What you can see down here is my sleeping bag. That's all sleeping bag, right? And I've seen quilts and sleeping bags packed down like that. So this is where the trade-off is when you're doing things on a budget. So, <laughs> like the sleeping bag was a hundred dollars um, but I got on special um, on a sale uh, but yeah if you want to see anything in particular um, I'll see if I can I don't know if the camera will pick it up but when we open up here there's the single mattress it's just one of those cheap dirty nasty uh, mattresses you get, like I said, it was on special for seven bucks at Big W, and I thought, yeah, I'll grab that. And I made a pump sack for it, so that way, you know, as you, as anybody who knows those cheap mattresses, you need a pump for it. There's no mouth thing. So I created a pump sack, and that pumps up in like five minutes. Um, I got some odds and ends on the inside pockets here. But I will go over all this stuff in more detail if you'd like. But comment down below, tell me what you want to see the most. In a week's time, I go for my overnighter, overnight hike. I think it's like uh, 20 kilometers. I think it'll be like 20 kilometers or so that we're hiking. Um, so I've got to carry all this stuff, plus food and water for all that. So it's going to be a challenge to see how this goes. I've got a feeling this is going to come off and stay on the front a lot. Um, but yeah, tell me exactly what you want to see, what you think is the better ones, uh, you want reviews of, and let me know what you think. Um, 
of course there's all sorts of ways to get them out of you know cheaper clothing you know with cheap clothing yeah there's light stuff like I said I, I'm wearing shorts and some tights as long pants and then the tights can come off throw them in here because they wrap down to nothing and I've got the shorts so I'm hoping that it I don't know how they'd go in really really cold weather we're coming in the summer and like I said it's 30 degrees today uh, it's supposed to get close to 40 in the next two days 40 degrees Celsius so that gives you an idea um, but yeah, I finally got a whole bunch of gear. You've seen a few of the reviews of it. And now it's time to go out and test it. So eat. I know this has been a bit long. If you've stuck around to the end, thanks a lot. Um, again, tell me what you want to see the most. And uh, I will review those in order. <laughs> so, that's my gear. Let's go take it out and see how it handles overnight. And if you've got any suggestions on being on a budget, let me know in the comments. Until next time guys, I'm Mark Shea. This is Exploring Australia. See ya!